Think of Ferrari versus Ford, Porsche versus the world. Sports car rivalries don't come much bigger than the one we have now between Audi and Peugeot. Audi won the American Le Mans Series opener at Sebring in March. Then Peugeot leveled things, taking Le Mans in June. And of course, that was the big one, but one to come, September. Well, we'll tell you in just a moment. Let's not forget about the Acura battle for the P1 championship mm -hmm. as well. All of these storylines, however, were overshadowed by a spectacular crash and recovery saga involving the Patron Highcroft team. On Thursday, at over 140 miles per hour, Scott Sharp flew violently into the catch fence after hitting a GT2 Porsche. Sharp was uninjured, that's the good news, in this frightening accident. Afterwards, he commented that he simply didn't see Dirk Werner's Porsche. Amazingly, he was able to walk away. A spare tub was located at HPD headquarters in California and air freighted directly to Road Atlanta. A 22-hour rebuild followed. No sleep for the team to ensure the Patron Highcroft Acura made it to the start. Yeah, but they did. This 10-hour or 1,000-mile classic started in the wet Saturday, but that didn't bother four-time winner Alan McNish. He blasted past both Peugeots in his Audi at Turn 1 to take the lead. It was an awful day for the DeFerrin Acura. IndyCar Series leader Scott Dixon crashed in his first stint, but that was just the second major incident for the car. A later caution, McNish still leading, but he spins at low speed behind the safety car. There go the Peugeots. This would cost McNish dearly later on. It was obvious much heavier rain was on the way, and at McNish's call, the Audis were in first to pit for wets. One lap later, the Le Mans winning Peugeots also hit pit road for treaded rubber. All right, where did that put McNish and his Audi? He splits them. He comes out in second. The lead Audi had already crested the hill, but the clouds opened up. I appreciate full coach yellow this. Full coach yellow this. It's dangerous. McNish was indeed prophetic moments later. He spins on the wet track. His first spin cost him the lead. This one cost him second place. The red flag came out almost immediately, but this was too late for Alan McNish. Standing water on the road at, at Road Atlanta was too excessive. The race never got going again. Almost four hours later, the checkered was waived, signaling the first time Audi had been defeated at Petit Le Mans. You know, at the end of the day, I think we did a very, very good job today. We acquitted ourselves extremely well. If we were able to run the race duration, I think uh, we would have been in a very strong position to take the victory. But, you know, that wasn't to be as it's turned out right now. I just feel kind of, like I said, frustrated. Here are the class winners, but the championship story in P1 looks promising for Patron Highcroft to win as they now carry a 21-point lead to Laguna Seca. That's the finale. Dyson is celebrating its first ever class victory at Petit Le Mans by winning P2 with Frank Kitty, Devlin and Leitzinger, while in GT2, a super strategical call by Risi and its driver Mika Salo to change to wet weather tyres early, put the Ferrari a lap ahead of its competition to clinch the class and keep them in the championship hunt.